In this video, we'll be writing inline assembly code to do string copy. Before we jump into the inline assembly portion of the video, let's see how to do a simple string copy in a regular C++ program. Here I have a simple C++ program which uses, uh, which initializes a source string here with a certain value. It has a destination string. It then uses the string copy function to copy the source string into the destination string. And at the completion of string copy, the program just displays the value of the destination string and it terminates. To make the string copy function visible in main, I also have to include the C string header. So running, building this and running it gives us the value of the destination string to be equal to prism, which is the value that we initialized in the source string. Now let's see how we can implement a string copy using x86 instructions. The instruction that we are going to use is the move string instruction. Specifically, we are going to use the byte version of the move string instruction. The mnemonic is move sb. We are also going to use the move string byte version of the instruction with the rep prefix. The rep prefix is short for repeat and all it does is it keeps executing the move string instruction repeatedly until a certain condition is met. In this case, the terminating condition is going to be ECX equals zero. So we are going to follow a sequence of steps in order for the move string instruction to copy the source string into the destination string successfully. We first start off by loading the RSI register with the starting address of the source string and the RDI register with the starting address of the destination string. And as I said before, we the terminating condition for the rep move string was ECX equals zero. So we preload ECX or the RCX register with the number of bytes that we need to be copied from the source string to the destination string. Typically, the number of bytes that we want to load ECX with will be the string length of the source string plus one in order to account for the null byte. So the rep move string will copy one byte from the source string into the destination string and for each byte that it copies from the source string into the destination string it increments the value of RSI and RDI by one in order to move to the next byte. It also decrements the value of ECX by 1 for each byte that it copies. And as I said before, the instruction will terminate when ECX reaches 0. That is when all the bytes have been copied. So let's take a look at the program that accomplishes this. Here similar to our C++ program, I have a source string which is initialized to prism and I have a destination string which is uninitialized. I have a variable numbytes which is initialized to zero. The numbytes will, will store the string length of the source instruction. I then call this routine called compute string length. I pass as arguments to it the source string and numbytes. The numbytes is passed by reference and the instruction, the function when it uh, computes the string length of the source length, it returns the string length in the numbytes variable. And I have written the compute string length function also using inline assembly. So now that we have the string length of the source string, we are now ready to execute the move string instruction. So if you look in the in, on this line where we are executing the rep move string, there are three parameters which are uh, uh, initialized here in the input constraint list. The constraint S denotes the RSI register and the RSI register 
is initialized with the starting address of the source string. The constraint D denotes the RDI register and the RDI register is mapped to the starting address of the dest string in our program. The constraint C denotes the ECX or the RCX register and that's mapped to the num bytes variable plus one in our program. So the reason I use plus one as I said before is to account for the null byte. So we want all the bytes including the null byte to be copied from the source string into the destination string. There is an instruction that precedes the rep move string here which is the CLD instruction. This is the clear direction flag instruction and this instruction clears the DF flag in the E flags register which makes the move string uh, instruction move in the forward direction. If you wanted the move string instruction to move in the backward direction then you would use the STD instruction which would set the direction flag and that would cause the um, values in RSI and RDI to get decremented for every iteration of the move string instruction. In this case we want the move string to go in the forward direction so we use the clear direction flag which clears the direction flag. So after the completion of the rep move string instruction we have our uh, destination string copied and ready so the program displays the value of the source string and the destination string and it exits. So let's try to build this program let me do a make clean and then a make and then I run string copy which is the name of the executable and as you can see the source string and the destination string are identical which means that the move string instruction that we used in order to copy the source into the destination string went through fine.